Hello everyone. I want to show you a tool that I've just been working on that makes it easier to find out about the projects that are involved in the MPW shuttles run by Google Skywater and eFabulous. And now you can get most of this information by just going to the eFabulous website and browsing, but it's difficult to know how many projects there are, how they're split up into the different shuttles, and which projects are successfully taping out or are failing. So I wanted to make an easier way of accessing all this information. Now, ideally, eFabulous would have an API and I could just uh, use that to get the information I want, but they don't have that yet. So this tool is like a stopgap while we're waiting for the API. So let's watch the demo. It's a command line tool because I'm into Unix and I like to be able to string together tools with the pipes so that I can grep and word count and use the other uh, standard Unix tools in the pipeline. So if we run the tool on its own, we just get the help and the basic option is list, which lists all the projects. So we can now pipe that to word count and see we've got 569 projects. Um, now let's uh, grep just for ones on MPW6. And by default, we're printing out the tape out and whether it was selected to actually be manufactured. So I can grep succeed and I'll only show the jobs that uh, had a successful tape out. And then I can also grep for yes, which is only the um, the jobs that actually made it onto the shuttle. So now I can look at an individual project and get all the info. I can easily get to the Git repo if I want there. Um, let's see what else we can do. Let's say for the last uh, 10 projects that were successfully taped out on MPW6, find the ones with the most number of pins in the user macros. And this was something that came up on my course discussion. We were thinking of a way to easily get this information. And this one just came up. I was talking with somebody about reram and I thought I'll just use the tool, uh, put this summary field in there and then do a case insensitive search for reram. And then I can just uh, drop the git URL and then I've got a very easy way of seeing reram projects. And now let's see um, only my projects, only ones that were taped out. And let's uh, change that grep so I definitely just only get me. And as a final thing, let's see only the ones that were on Sky 130, 130B. So that's a little demo of the kinds of things that you can do with this tool. Obviously, if you want to add more stuff to it, then the idea is you can just uh, use the tool and easily make a pull request. So let's take a look at the repo. It's on an Apache 2 license. You can clone it easily. There's a readme to help you get started as well as this video. It comes with a, a database, a, a Python pickle database of all the information. So you don't have to actually scrape the site yourself. But if you do want to do that, you need to install Selenium and then run the update cache tool. It's not too long. It's about 270 lines, so it should be pretty easy to uh, have a look and enhance it if you want to. Now, I thought maybe I would record the development of this because that might be interesting to people who are interested in, in uh, software development, but it's definitely not interesting. I recorded only about the first two and a half hours of maybe four hours of development, but I thought I would just play that sped up by 100,000 times, uh, which takes about um, eight seconds here. And I just want you to notice every time the screen is flashing, that's either me looking something up on Stack Overflow or checking uh, by look, reading the source on the HTTPS pages. The thing that I'm trying to get across here is uh, if you're not into software development or you're not into this because you think it's too hard, then even the people that uh, know what they're doing still um, depend a lot on Google searching and it uh, shouldn't get in the way of you getting started to learn to program if you wanted to. And I thought this would also be a good opportunity to just give one of the tips that I use when I'm developing software. When I ran this, I was expecting not to get this output uh, because I was adding the bit in where it detects whether the project's been taped out or not. And I had a mistake somewhere, I didn't know where it was. And so I uh, added these lines here. So the IPDB is the interactive Python debugger. So now when it uh, comes across this problem, it dumps me into the uh, shell. I can read the, um, the code. I can interact with um, the program, see what's going on in the data. Here I've realized I haven't stripped off that backslash N. 
so I can have a play with Python to check um, how to do it. Uh, strip that off and then check that that's right. Looks better and then I can go back in here and fix the program. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this short video and have a great weekend.